Hi and welcome back to the Mini Split Mitchell uh, channel. What we're going to do today, we're going to take a look at something that is very, very important when it comes to inverters. When it comes to an inverter, you need extra protection on that unit. That unit has a board in it. It's like a computer board. When you have your computer at home, your computer at home has a UPS backup and it has surge protection on it. Not only surge protection, but it's going to protect that computer and the boards within. This uh, box here is a little bit more sophisticated than what you might have on just your UPS. Uh, this is designed specifically for these units. This is two different versions. We have uh, the newer version here that has a uh, breaker in it or a disconnect in it, and this one does not. We'll just go ahead and open this up, and I'll show you the inside. And when we go to the inside of this one here, um, what it has, it has a voltage limiter here on this side. We also have a surge protector in it, which goes at 260 and is above the recommended voltage for it. So what we do, the instructions are on this side in the, in the box. When you open it up, don't let it over, overwhelm you. It's not that big a deal. The directions are right over here on the side. If you come to one of my uh, inverter classes that I give, I give out a little sheet and each one of these, I tell you exactly what to set it at. Uh, it's real simple. You'll just go in there and go, oh, Gary said set it at this. You set it at that and it's done. This is just such a simple box. After you do it a few times, it'll get to be old hack. So let's just take a look at this one second. I'll go ahead and I'll open up this box. This is a RSH 50 VR MDC kit. So what we're going to do, I'll go ahead and I'm going to open it up and show you. This one's got a little bit of a new look. I, I've used this one in the classroom to show off uh, and tell uh, contractors about. So let's go ahead and let's open it up. And all your instructions are on the inside. So we'll go ahead. These are NEMA 3 enclosures. Uh, very, very good enclosures. Okay, this one's going to have a little different look. If you look at the two, this one's going to be just a little bit different than this one uh, because it is a newer box. This is their newer edition of this box. And then somebody will ask, they, I always get this question, where are the knockouts in it? There's not any knockouts. Uh, just take you a unibit or a step bit as they call it. Take your unit bit or step bit and, and, and drill in on the bottom. And the thing about it is, once you come in, no matter which way you come in, when you come in, you will come in here to the top of the breaker. It's just a, it's just a breaker or a disconnect, shall I say. It's not a breaker. It's not sized. It is a disconnect. So you'll come into the top of here, and then when you come out, you'll come out here. And once you come out, you'll go to your unit, just like this unit sitting here. This is a side discharge unit, and so you'll go into it. As you can see, I have it wired here. Uh, it comes in from my, my source, my power source, and comes up. When I come in, I come into it. This one's live. I come in this side, and then I'm going to go out on this side. So I chose, this is not out in the rain or anything, and it does have a watertight closure. So I come out the side and I dressed it and come down and went into my unit. No matter which way you do it, most people choose to come out the bottom because that is the driest option. Uh, you do need to put watertight on it, uh, connectors. But the thing about it is, is programming it. Now, most all, if not all, of your uh, inverter series, no matter what the unit may be, no matter who may sell it, typically the brownout, the lower voltage, the brownout, is going to be 197 volts. So at 197 volts, you're going to ruin that board. So you don't want to go below 197 volts. On the top side, you do not want peak voltage going over 253 volts because that is at the point where that it will take out this board. So what we need to do, we need to set this up to where that my lowest voltage limit is 200 and my highest voltage limit is 253 or 250 because this goes out at 253, so I want this at 250. What this unit will do for you is it will take 
and it will set it up to where the 250 is your highest voltage that it can receive, and one, uh, 200 would be your lowest voltage. You'll set that up in your instructions. Like I say, I have a cheat sheet, so to speak, uh, that I can hand out at any of my trainings. Uh, and what you do is you set that up for that, and then you set the timing up. How long does it need to see an over voltage limit before it cuts it off? Okay, I make that very short. A half second, a half second I see it, I'm going to cut it off because I want to save my unit. So anytime I see 250 for a half a second, it's going to cut it off. That's going to keep it safe because that's below 253. And then it's also going to do the exact same thing on the lower voltage. A half second, I see anything 200 or below, it's going to cut it off. It's going to cut it off at 200. Then at that point in time, it has saved it. You can also set up how long it takes it to come back on. You can set up three minutes, five minutes. I usually set up five minutes for it. Uh, you set five minutes here, and yes, that is going to increase your forever time, as I call it. As a technician, we know how long it takes a unit to come back on. It takes that five minutes. Sometimes it seems like it's five hours because you're sitting there waiting, trying to get the situation fixed. This is going to take three to five minutes, and your unit's going to take three to five minutes. But in doing that, it will ensure that your boards are protected. Now, it is highly recommended, and I would say even more than highly recommended, that you put this on every inverter unit you go on. Because when you put this on every inverter unit, you are putting a peace of mind that you are not going to uh, have to go back out on that customer. So guys, take this into your toolbox. This is something that I would sell with every inverter unit. It would be no question. It would not be something, this would just be the price of the unit that I would put in to my unit when I sold it. And this is a RSH 50 VR MDC kit. I will try to put the Johnstone number on the screen or down in the, in the uh, description below, and I will put it down there, and you can get it out of either one. But when you do, install an inverter series, I do recommend this very, very much.